Hello the internet and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to assemble and test a C64 saver. Just a few weeks ago, um, by browsing the web, I discovered that uh, using the standard Commodore 64 power supplies is actually pretty dangerous, especially after so many years. Because uh, it turns out that the power supplies are supplying these boards um, uh, nine, uh, around 9 volts AC, uh, which if I'm not mistaken, it's only used by the, by the cassette port. These 9 volt DCs are used to generate uh, 5 volts and 12 volts on the board, but the main 5 volt for all the main chips on these boards, um, this is the newer one, but uh, the same applies on the older one, is actually generated inside a power supply through a voltage regulator. Now, let me show you what I mean. This is a classic 664 uh, wedged shape power supplies. Now, the way these power supplies were designed, uh, they were not really designed for servicing, um, but somehow I managed to open this one. And, and you can see you can see how this is designed. Basically, these power supplies will generate around 9, 10 volts AC, which is going straight to the part, to the Commodore 64. And then you, you can see there's a little chip in here, which should be a voltage regulator, which is submerged into this resin thing. So it's basically, I mean, it can be removed, I guess, but it's in there. And that chip is providing the five volts, which is going to our most precious chips, uh, the, the CPU, the SID, the PLA, um, the VIC chip, everything, the memory chips, everything is powered by directly by the voltage regulator. Now what happens, what can happen, is that the voltage regulator fails and it sends unregulated voltage to the chips. What happens as a consequence is that your Pressure 664 is a write-off, because uh, suddenly all the chips are dying more or less simultaneously. And I've read some horror stories on the internet of people powering up the, the 664, trying to power up the 664. The 664 would show a black screen, so they moved on and tried another C64, and then another one, to then realize the power supply had failed and it was just basically frying one C64 after the other. So when I got that information, I basically stopped using these power supplies and I looked online for some solutions. One solution I found from Yambita is using one of this. It's a P6KE 6.8A, which if I understand correctly, is a component which is shorting over, I think over 6.8 volts. Um, that means that components should, um, uh, should be able to withstand up to seven volts. Um, so in theory, this is shorting the um, five volt rail over 6.8 volts, which should be able to provide some kind of protection. Obviously, um, we assume there is a fuse, a working fuse on the power supply, because that will blow. Uh, if there isn't, well, as I said, it's not the best solution. I've also read a comment about whether the voltage goes over, I think it's uh, 11 volts. Um, this will stop being shorted, basically. So it's kind of a... You know, it's a nice thing probably to have on a C64. It doesn't cost anything. It's very easy to install, basically. But apparently, the best solution for using 664s using old power supplies is using a 664 saver. So a 664 saver is uh, a custom board designed by user BWAC, B-W-A-C-K. It's gone through several revisions, obviously. And I understand uh, the first revision, I think it was just cutting the power whenever the voltage was going over uh, 5.7 volts or something like that. I believe this later revision is actually regulating the voltage when it goes over uh, 5 point some volts. What I've done, I had these uh, little PCBs printed, and this is the first time I'm actually <laughs> printing my own PCBs. I purchased all the components needed, including the little enclosure, the little connectors, uh, resistors, transistors. So what I'm gonna do tonight, I'm gonna assemble one of these boards and test it uh, to make sure it works, not on an actual C64. And that's it. I'm assuming, I believe there are um, many videos of like this on the internet, I, I suppose. So I'll try and keep this video as short as possible. The C64 Saver is quite a neat board. 
Um, as you can see, go uh, an input here, you go five volts, ground and nine volt AC, the circuit, and then you have an output. Uh, the nine volt is basically, um, I think if, even if you look at the back, you can see uh, in basically goes to the out. It, there's no, there's no uh, regulation or protection on the nine volt IC, because the, to be honest, the worst that can happen to that is that the power supply breaks, basically the, the winding gets interrupted. So it, it can only stop working, it cannot get worse. While the 5 volt, which is coming from the voltage regulator I mentioned before, is going through um, several components and then it gets out on the 5 volts here. Now, this little board, it's amazing because it fits in this very nicely, in this nice little box. So the idea is to fit one of these on one end and then to have a little lead coming out of the other, of the other um, end and install one of these connectors on the other side. Oh, and just to mention, uh, this is the through-hole version. There is also an SMD version. I just decided to go with the through-hole version because I, you know, I had some of the components. I, it's probably a bit easier to put together. Even though there is one SMD component, this one, Q2, that's it. To be honest, it's, it's not so small and, you know, I don't have problems with SMD components. It's just, just to mention uh, one component is SMD. Uh, the shop where I purchased this resistor didn't have the, um, um, the, the size that the schematics require for this one. Um, so I'm gonna have to probably leave it at an angle. As I said, I'm not gonna test this on an actual C64 in the first place. So first thing I wanna do is to make sure that ground is going to ground and nine volts should go straight to nine volts. Uh, and it doesn't, why not? Hmm. Well, I think he was saying that on the, on the instruction that I have to add a jumper, right? Yes, so J2 and J4 Okay, so let's test this again. So we said ground is going to ground and nine volts goes straight to nine volts. Yes, and obviously five volts does not. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna feed the C64 saver with five volts and see what happens on the other side. And then slowly using my bench power supply, I'm, gonna I'm going to slowly uh, increase the voltage and see what happens. Right, so I've got my bench power supply connected to the input, which is on the right hand side. Left hand side, I've got my multimeter set to voltage mode uh, DC. So right now my bench power supply is switched off. Let's switch it on, it's set to one volt at the moment. So I have nothing going through. I'm raising the voltage to two volts. Uh, still nothing, okay. Uh, let's do three volts. Oh, there we go, 3.4 and I go 3.4 out. So I'm feeding 3.4 volts and I get 3.4 out. Go to four and a half and it follows perfectly fine. It's the same exact voltage. Let's reach five and we go five. Let's go and, tr and try and go higher. Uh, 4.2, 5.3, 5.48. There we go, no voltage. So it's not actually regulating, it's actually interrupting. Uh, if I'm going down to 5.1, there we go, 5.1. If I'm simulating a power supply failure, so I'm going straight to six volts, that's it. The output is being completely, completely removed. Amazing. Let's try seven volts, eight volts, nine volts, 14 volts, that's it. Now my, the power supply is doing 15 and it's now 15.2 volts and I have no output. And if I'm going down to five volts, there we go, my output is coming back. And it works pretty well, I like it. Um, so I wanna try and add um, a load 
on the output just to simulate some kind of load. But I just want to try and simulate a little load and see what happens with see, make sure it behaves with the load connected as well. So I found these two 8 ohms resistors, uh, which are parallel um, to make a 4 ohm resistor. Uh, these are 100 watts, so it's plenty of headroom. Again, I don't mean to burn this 664 saver. Um, it just, I believe the 664 is rated 15 watts. Now, I don't know whether it probably is 15 watts with uh, the cassette tape and, and other things. I don't think it's just everything from the five, uh, five volts coming from the power supply. But again, at four ohms, um, at 5.5 volts, which is more or less where the C64 is cutting voltage, this uh, two resistor should draw about eight watts, which feels reasonable to me. And again, it should be safe for the C64 saver. So let's give it a go. Now I have zero volts. I'm turning it up to 3 point something, which is where it starts working, and it's working 4.4, 4.6, 4.95, 5.5, 5 .5, and it cuts the voltage. So everything seems to be working fine. I'm I have currently the um, bench power supply set to 5.56. If I'm going down to 5.3, 5.3, there we go, I got 5.1 output. So yeah, everything seems to be working and I guess I'm ready to fully assemble it and test it with a C64. Now, as I totally suspected, this capacitor is a little bit too tall because unfortunately it sticks out and I cannot close this little nice box. I happen to have this SMD version. So either I try to adapt the SMD version or I can try with a slightly different value. Let's try with the SMD. Um, I'm afraid I couldn't capture this on camera, um, but uh, yes, it's not 100% straight. I hope it's just the bay. Yes, it's the bay is not touching the PCB. It's not, it's not exploding. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's not even completely straight, but what matters is that if I'm buzzing it, so if I check for short, it's not shorted. This is in uh, continuity mode. Um, it is not shorted and I can basically measure continuity between the trace at the bottom and one leg. There it goes. And the other leg, there you go. So, well, I need to clean it. Um, I'll, I'll give it a test <laughs> again, just to make sure everything works. Now it looks like I may have misunderstood how this um, PCB is, is, is basically, how it's working with this box. Because I thought that I could um, basically install one of this on a side, but obviously it doesn't fit because uh, it's gonna hit the capacitor and probably even the board itself. So this is designed for two wires to come out and then to have like a proper plug like this, one male, one female. Now, honestly, I'd rather have a slightly bigger box where I can plug this um, so I don't have two leads, one on the right, one on the left, one in, one out. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to finish this today. I will have to order a slightly bigger box so that I can reuse this one. And this is the box I, I could find online. I was looking for something slightly bigger than this. To be honest, I looked online. This is the closest I could find. It's a bit chunky. It's a bit obviously bigger than the, the PCB, but I think it's gonna be fine. This is also a Hammond manufacturing box. It's a 1591XX MSBK uh, in black.
And here we've got the final product. Um, again, I, this is not exactly the box that was designed to work with. So this is a much bigger box, um, but it works with my socket here. So we got the socket for the input from the power supply, which goes on the input side of the C64 saver. Then we got the output that goes in the very nice, I really like this uh, Rayan uh, plug. It's very, very sturdy. It's much better than the Commodore 64 one. Uh, the only thing I feel... No, it's actually the same length. Uh, I thought it was a bit longer, but it's exactly the same. And this is so much better, to be honest. I have reused um, one of the stands on the, uh, on the box itself, on the enclosure itself. And eventually this will be like this. Yeah. So eventually this will be like this. It feels good. Um, it's probably bigger on camera than, than, than it is. I mean, I, I, it doesn't feel like a, like a problem to me to, to have close to the C64. I put a cable tie here on the cable itself, on the jacket. So if you try and pull the jacket, it doesn't go anywhere. So the final step, I guess it would be to plug the C64 power supply and make sure that we got the voltages out. There you go. So that's the 11 volt. Well, it's called nine volts, but it's usually uh, higher than that. So that's the 11 volt AC, which is being passed through. Checking the uh, five volts. Let's make sure it's the right polarity, even though I guess if the capacitor would have exploded by now. <laughs> we have 5.3 volts, uh, which is the same voltage going in, I think. 5.3. So we've got 5.302 out uh, in and 5.302 or out. Before I burn everything, Let's also check, it's gonna be a bit complicated, but let's check here. So the uh, number one, the, the shell is not connected to anything. So there's no really risk to short anything when you do that. This, this should be nine volt AC and it is. And we have 5.3. And here is my non favorite 664. I have another one, which is my favorite. So I'm not gonna test it on my favorite one. The wedge C64 power supply is plugged in, but it's not powered, so, and the C64 is powered off. Let's uh, power the power supply first, and then let's power the C64. Everything seems to be working. If you've managed to reach the end of the video, I have a little surprise for you. When I placed the order for the PCBs, uh, they were pretty cheap, so I ordered uh, five of them. So one I've used, and I have four leftovers. I definitely would like to make another one because I have two power supplies. I think I've got boxes for, uh, like three boxes. I think I purchased three of these boxes, and I have components, I believe, for all of them. I'd like to make a small ruffle, a little game. If you watch the video, you may have noticed a code. Uh, let's call it a secret code, which is somewhere in the video. If you watched it, you know where it is. And um, the game is, if you comment under the video with just the code, nothing else. I repeat, just the code, nothing else. I will give this video two weeks and then I will randomly choose one of the users, one of the comments, to receive a fully populated PCB tested and working, um, just the PCB with the components, no connectors, no boxes. Uh, sorry, I really, I truly haven't got them, but it will be a fully populated PCB tested and working for your Commodore 64. Sorry, I know it's not much, but again, my videos uh, right now, I'm making just a few views a week. So this is what I can do at the moment. I hope you appreciate it. So good luck to all of you. And uh, I'm looking forward to reading your comments actually just codes. And uh, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, even though uh, it's nothing really special. Just wanted to share with you the, the building of the 64 saver. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please feel free to comment. I look forward to them and uh, you have a great day and I'll see you soon on my channel. Thank you.